Hey everyone, today's Species Spotlight is on, for whatever reason we're sticking with the theme, or as of right now anyway, another old world Asian rat snake. You'll notice a change of scenery right here. This is actually the office of the shot. We're going to see how it goes for video quality as far as video and lighting purposes go. Um, it's not as great, but the audio should be better. But you're here to see reptiles, not me necessarily, and we're still doing plenty of cutaways for the reptiles. So... Back to the species spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about the trinket snake or the trinket rat snake. It's a really cool species of old world or Asian rat snake and it looks very similar to a lot of beauty snakes and I'll be honest when I first saw it and was offered hey do you want this snake because this is the one that's going to be in the video today I went sure it's a beauty snake let me do a little bit of research to dial in exactly what is needed because I know the general husbandry that is needed for most of the beauty snakes and it turns out not exactly the same. So the trinket snake or the trinket rat snake does come from Asia, obviously, although it comes from a different part. It mostly lives on the subcontinent peninsula, whatever you want to call it, of India and the surrounding areas, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. The, the big thing that when you first look at it is you can see that it's very beautiful. And that's actually where its Latin name comes from. Its genus name, I will entirely butcher, so as always, here it is. But its species name is Helena. And if anyone took your Greek literacy, fiction, whatever, history class back in junior high or high school, you probably learned about Helen of Troy. Helen of Troy was supposedly this incredibly beautiful woman, thence Helena is the species of this name. And when you look at it, yeah, it's a beautiful snake. That's why I thought it looked and was a beauty snake. But for starters, it's an entirely different genus and species altogether. It is not the same as the beauty snakes. The very first thing when you look at when you look at this animal is that it is much smaller than a lot of the beauty snakes, the Vietnamese, the Chinese, the Ridley eye even. Those typically are in the four and a half, five plus foot range. These guys typically stick around two to three feet long. Supposedly there are reports up there of them getting over four feet, but it's been very difficult to find a lot of good information about this species, not only for captive purposes, but anything outside of just people read doing the Wikipedia article that has one source for it. So uh, despite my best digging, the most I could ever see is that they typically stick around three feet long. If anyone has ever seen a larger one, because both mine and one side have seen the table, they all never get more than about two and a half feet long. So if anyone has any experience, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to learn more. Now, these guys, in addition to being much, much smaller, they're much more terrestrial as well. Typically, the beauty snakes that we would consider semi to fully arboreal, where oftentimes they spend their time either perched up, depending on the species, up in trees or in caves. These guys are often found in what a lot of North American colubrid people and herpers would understand is traditional, most snake habitat on the ground, under underbrush, under detritus, both natural and human made. And yes, they sometimes are found in trees, but typically pretty low, not very high, even like some like black rats and uh, Everglades rat snakes can get pretty high up. Typically we're thinking more like bull snake, garter snake type of habitat, if that helps to any degree. These guys do look like the beauty snakes as well with their pattern. So that Helena, the beauty thing again. When you look at them, they have a pretty broad, rounded head. It looks pretty big. It's not as narrow or as pointed like many rat snakes are. Not to say that they have very pointy snake, uh, pointy heads, but it is much more round and blunted. And then their actual body, babies are a little bit darker. They lighten up with age, but it's kind of that tanny brownish cream color. And then they have really nice black and white diadem or checkered patterns on the first third to close to half of their body and then the rest of it is kind of two black bars or stripes that run down to the tip of the tail with a kind of whitish light underbelly. These guys are well well known for their attitudes. They are definitely a stand and hold my ground animal versus getting out of there at least much more rapidly. They are very reactive, they are very defensive, and they are active diurnal hunters as well. So when we think about that kind of attitude and behavior in captivity, we can, you know, essentially extrapolate a few things. So they come from a warm climate, they're diurnal, their activity period is very long, and it's not, they're not going to be out in the middle of the day, obviously, because in India it gets very hot there. But humidity is really high. They like warm temps. They're going to be out during the day. So that means you're going to have a snake that once it's comfortable and established will be out during the day. Maybe not around noon, but they'll be out during the day. 
They're also generalists in the wild. So they're eating lizards, they're eating ground nesting birds, different mammals. And that's, once again, once you get an established snake in captivity, they often are great feeding responses. And I can tell you this right now, that thing pulls little rodents off my tongs harder than my boas do. And then they like, they obviously will benefit from a nice cluttered habitat. So plenty of places to not only bask, but to get away, lots of humidity, a decent water bowl, because they have been seen swimming supposedly. And they do benefit from that, kind of like plenty of other species of snakes out there. Now, this is the part where it gets a little bit more anecdotal. So I have only had experience with my one, and based on what the person who gave me her it says, it is significantly different than what I was told, although he could have just been saying that to get me to take her. These guys typically have a much, much, much more defensive attitude. They are very reactive, like I said before, but they are very quick to bite repeatedly. And again, in the constantly rehashed Wikipedia and source, which that source that's where they took it from, says that they bite often, repeatedly, and typically because of their inward teeth, although that's most snakes, so eh, their inward facing teeth causes a lot of mechanical damage. This girl strikes at me a lot. She's never actually tagged me, but because I don't like to stress my animals out and I don't like to show bites on camera, that's why it's all purely cutaways and we're doing the video like this. I was told that this, that the person who had her before would take her out all the time, put her on exercise stuff and enrichment things. This girl, we have now gotten to the point where she no longer tries to bite me as long as I'm not physically touching her. I can be in her space. I can get very close to her, but she doesn't actually strike. She just gives that very atypical rat snake behavior, that defense posture where they rise, they rise up, they puff out their throats, and they will sit there with their mouth open all the time. And she does do this based on the different beauty snakes that I've worked with, both ones that I had for intermediate periods of time, as well as, you know, Braden Exotics, who shows off theirs a lot, and some of the other ones that I've had a chance to work with and handle. The trinket snake does seem to be much more of an advanced handling species of snake. Probably one that you would end up classifying as a more display animal, just not as arboreal, but probably just as offensive and likely to bite as, say, a green tree python or a tree boa that isn't used to being handled, that only it was much more terrestrial. So it'll be a little bit of a longer enclosure than a tall enclosure. Think like Amazon tree boa, you know, so where it will, you know, it'll be out, it'll be on the ground when it feels comfortable, but it's not one that you really are going to be handling too, too much. It's a really cool species of snake. It's a real oddball species of snake that you just don't really see too often. And it's definitely one that I would recommend for someone who likes the kind of feistier attitude snakes. And yeah, more than likely they are probably all wild caught. I don't know too, too many people, at least in the States. I know there's a couple people over in Europe. Um, definitely a couple people. I don't think DM Exotics does in their facility over in Asia. Um, but I think there are a couple other people that are working with captive born and bred trinkets, but I don't know anybody here in the States that are. If they are, oh, wait, I lied. Circle, uh, Circle Exotics does, or Circle Reptiles, they work with trinket snakes. So there you go. There is somebody doing captive ones. Uh, but they're still very uncommon. A little bit of a smaller species of snake. So if you want something that's like a beauty snake, but you don't have the size or the space for like a six foot plus enclosure for like a big VBB, then maybe a trinket rat snake would be a good alternative for you. Sorry, I got a little bit rambly there. Just kind of popped up in my head as I'm recording this, and it's been a nightmare to record today so far. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you want to check out more species spotlights, I have a whole playlist here. There's over 60 species. I didn't know we had gotten that far. That whole playlist, if you want to check that out, helps the YouTube algorithm, puts my stuff out there. We all know social media is all weird right now, so if you can, please like and subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you really like this uh, content and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon as well as just a, another kind of, you know, reminder out there. Once we hit 5K subscribers, so if you do like this, please share with your friends. Uh, we'll do a full facility walk through so it'll be a full tour of this building a tour of the other cool weather asian rat snake and gecko room and the pond and the livestock because we also are a little bit of kind of a hobby farm ranch here and then for 10k we will do an animal giveaway so just that kind of reminder plug hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video thank you so much hope you're having a great day i'll check you next time